that is there is slip of the tongue phenomena now this is also called spoonerism as it is named after uh, william spooner now uh, if you just look at uh, the examples it would become clear like to make a long shori start now what what a uh, mistake has been committed like these two sounds have been actually uh, interchanged like it it should have been to make a long story short we have said to make a uh, uh, long shori start so two words they got their initial sounds exchanged right and this phenomena is called slip of the uh, slip of the tongue phenomena now you have hissed all my mystery classes now again you can see uh, we have exchanged some of the uh, initial sounds of two different words right so uh, the expression should have been you have missed all my history classes but uh, because of the exchange of sounds we have made you have hissed all my mystery classes now uh, this phenomena is called slip of the tongue phenomena now most of the slips attributed to him means uh, william spooner involve the interchange of two initial sounds but it is not only initial sounds rather we have some other types of slip of tongue as well we have uh, a preservation error uh, in which we carry over a sound from one word to the next we carry over a sound from one word to the next you can see black blocks now here this last sound is carried over to the next word as well like the expression had to be black boxes but uh, we carry over this uh, last sound to uh, to the second word and we make it blocks so this uh, type of you can say a mistake when we carry over a, a sound from one word to the other that is called preservation error now similarly uh, instead of carrying over we can uh, do reverse of this like we can commit anticipation error when uh, a sound is brought forward like instead of taking a sound or taking uh, uh, yes taking a sound to next word we can take a sound of uh, the second word and bring it to the first word as well so uh, if we say nomen numeral right now it had to be roman numeral but this ra sound was replaced with na because of anticipation of this sound like while articulating this sound we had this sound this word in our mind that it is going to start with na so in anticipation we use this now uh, this na sound and may, made it uh, nomen numeral right so it had to be roman numeral and uh, this na sound this na sound actually was used uh, in anticipation so this sound actually came here as we were anticipating this sound now similarly a cup of tea right so this ta is actually uh being taken from here and we anticipated it uh, in this word right so and and used it while we we were articulating this word so uh, a cup of tea that was made a cup of tea because of anticipation error now same is highly played player now played this la sound is the anticipated sound which was supposed to be here and also like we can see in in this word but we used it here instead of like a uh, paid we we made played now uh, sometimes we can have interchange of the uh, uh, final sounds of a word as well like we can say uh, stick nef right so instead of uh, you can say stiff neck we have made it stick nef now if you just uh, look at this uh, previous uh, example now we were exchanging the beginning sounds but we can also have exchange of the final sounds as well and you can uh, check this example and same is uh, loop before you leak right now is look before you leave so these final sounds have been uh, exchanged now <coughs> all of these examples are of slip of tongue phenomena but we we can uh, just uh, categorize them that it is simple uh, slips of tongue we have uh, preservation errors we have anticipation errors and we can have si uh, final sound exchanges as well now uh, 
it has been argued that a uh, slip of this type are, are uh, never random they never produce a phonologically unacceptable uh, sequence uh, they indicate the existence of different st stages in the articulation of linguistic expression right so uh, actually if you just uh, uh, recall that localization view we said that the whole uh, the process of articulation that has different stages right so now we cannot say that it is only the tongue that is actually uh, creating cer certain errors or mistakes like the view is uh, there that maybe these are these slips of tongues are because of, because of slips of brains like the our brain that is not able to send the right signal about the sequence of sounds so instead of uh, you can say sending the sequence of a uh, cup of tea the uh, the brain is actually sending the signal of top of tea so uh, like the view is that it is only the slip of tongue and the other view is that it is not only the slip of tongue rather it is the slip of brain because brain is not sending the right signal to the articulatory system right so although the slips are mostly treated as errors of articulation it has been suggested that they may result from slips of brain as it tries to organize linguistic message right so the dominant view is that the, these are because of a uh, slip of tongue like the, the the problem is at the stage of articulation but as i said that uh, some other views are that this is not simply the uh, you can say articulation uh, error or articulation mistake rather brain is sending a signal uh, in which the sequence of sound that has not proper uh, properly been organized but whatever it is like these are not disorders these uh, happen quite usually uh, you might have seen many people that, uh, who have both tip of the tongue and slip of the tongue uh, quite uh, frequently and sometimes you might have uh, yourself also experienced this uh, when you are having some sounds carried over or some sounds you being used uh, in anticipation or maybe there was some exchange of initial or ending sound or sometimes you can also use the uh, tip of the tongue phenomena <coughs> where uh, uh, you actually uh, were uh, having such sort of uh, problem in retrieval of different words right so you knew that what word uh, you were uh, going to articulate but when you articulated it was uh, a very similar word but not the word that you intended to articulate so these are not disorders these are not uh, you can say uh, part of any uh, disease rather these happen these are some mistakes or some errors which uh, some people say are at the level of articulation and others say these are not at the level of articulation rather they they are uh, you can say uh, some some errors in the uh, signal which brain is sending to the articulators <clears throat> Now, after the slip of the tongue, we also have slip of the ear phenomena. That um, uh, whenever we we hear a word, like we uh, we may not be able to actually recognize that what has been said. Now, if I say great ape, now uh, you might uh, take it as great ape, or you might take it as gray tape, right? I said great tape, so you might take it as great ape, or you might take it gray tape similarly uh, we say glide glidely the cross side bear so it might also be taken as glidely the cross side bear right or i say gray day so when i say gray day so some of you would take it as grade a and other would take it as gray day right so this is slip of the year phenomena and this is uh, again is not something that uh, that is uh, rare like we many a time see people having this slip of ear or we also experience that uh, uh, we can have this slip of ear right so it is uh, another type of uh, slip uh, which may provide uh, some clues to how the brain tries to make sense of auditory signals it receives like uh, uh, the uh, so, uh, like the problem is that whenever it is uh, when whenever we hear the expression 
we don't hear it clearly and mind tries to make sense of uh, of the expression itself right so uh, if it is making sense as great ape or great ape so the problem was that the word was probably not heard properly and it tried to make sense of the expression okay now uh, uh, moving on to words uh, disorders like as as i said that uh, the, the tip of the tongue slip of the tongue slip of the ear now all of them they are not disorders they are simply errors or mistakes but uh, when we uh, uh, we have some damage to the, uh, any part of brain now that causes some disorder and we have some disorders or impairments in language language function and uh, uh, an impairment of language function due to lo uh, localized brain damage that leads to difficulty in understanding and are producing linguistic form is called aphasia right so uh, this disorder or this uh, this uh, um, uh, language impairment uh, which is because of damage to brain is known as aphasia right so there are different types of aphasia then uh, because we we know that there are different uh, parts of brain which are uh, uh, controlling uh, different functions in language so uh, pro, uh, damage to all of those uh, parts are uh, they they would be causing different types of aphasias right so uh, like a problem to different parts would be would be causing different types of aphasia uh, so what is aphasia then uh, aphasia is language impairment or language disorder uh, that is caused because of damage to brain or damage to the uh, localized brain right uh, an impairment of language function due to brain damage leads to difficulty in understanding uh, and are producing linguistic forms right so either we are not able to understand uh, language or we are not able to produce language because of this disorder or because of we can say damage to a particular uh, part of brain now if we talk about some of the uh, uh, commonly uh, known types we can have agraphia uh, which is uh, difficulty in writing like the the patient uh, would be or the person wouldn't be able to write properly he would face difficulty in writing now how much difficulty would he face that depends on the uh, level of damage to to his brain right so uh, uh, the level of damage and the level of uh, difficulty are directly proportional like if the da damage is of high level uh, uh, the the difficulty would also be of higher level and if the damage is a uh, minor one so the difficulty in writing would be a uh, lesser one now the next is the alexia uh, which is difficulty in reading again the level of difficulty that may vary uh, then is uh, anomia which is difficulty in using uh, proper nouns or words and then is agrammatism uh, where the person feels difficulty in using grammatical words uh, like articles prepositions etc right so these are uh, four different types uh, agraphia difficulty in writing alexia difficulty in reading anomia difficulty in using uh, proper nouns and words and agrammatism that is difficulty in using grammatical words like articles prepositions etc now uh, uh, coming back to aphasias or types of aphasias we uh, first have broca's aphasia right so you would remember that uh, broca's area in our mind that is responsible for uh, language uh, production right now if uh, uh, someone has damage to that part of uh, brain so the person would have uh, a problem in language production and his disorder uh, is known as broca's aphasia or motor aphasia right so if the person has uh, damage to broca's area of his brain so uh, the person would have a disorder language disorder or language impairment which would be known as broca's aphasia or motor aphasia <clears throat> it is characterized by a substantially reduced amount of speech right so the the speech that reduces 
now distorted articulation takes place the person has slow and often effortful speech now what is said often consists almost entirely of lexical morphemes right so functional morphemes are not used rather the person would be using uh, uh, lexical morphemes such as nouns verbs uh, adjectives etc but uh, even those would be uh, articulated very slowly and with a lot of uh, effort and uh, the, the amount of speech that would be reduced a lot now <clears throat> The frequent emission of functional morphemes uh, takes place, as I said earlier, uh, and inflections uh, with the lexical morphemes are also skipped, right? So, uh, as we have discussed that the person is able to, uh, uh, with effort, articulate uh, lexical morphemes, but even with those lexical morphemes, the person wouldn't be able to use uh, inflections. Uh, for example, with nouns, he wouldn't be able to uh, use uh, plural infection, uh, inflection that is s uh, r e s similarly the person wouldn't be able to use uh, past form uh, uh, morpheme with uh, uh, verbs right so these inflections are also missing now uh, the uh, speech of type we can say are the uh, aphasia that ca can be called agrammatic aphasia because the person uh, is not able to uh, use functional morphemes and he is also not able to use uh, any sort of inflections with his uh, lexical morphemes. In a grammatic speech, uh, the grammatical markers are missing. Uh, in Broca's aphasia, comprehension is typically much better than production. As uh, the, the area is controlling the production of speech, so uh, the problem should only be uh, with uh, 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 production of, of speech and the comprehension should be uh, b better and uh, this is the uh, this is how it happens like the comprehension of uh, uh, sounds heard is better as compared to the production of sound now if we look at some of the examples of Broca's or motor aphasia the, uh, the person uh, would be uh, making expressions such as this I eggs and eat and drink coffee breakfast right so the person is actually trying to make a sentence such as uh, i uh, uh, ate eggs uh, uh, and drank coffee uh, in the breakfast but uh, you can see what some sort of expressions he is making uh, the person would have uh, uh, hesitations and pauses like uh, he might say my cheek very annoyance uh, man is my shoulder uh, aching all, uh, all my uh, all round here now see there are a lot of pauses and uh, uh, the the expression that is actually not making a, any sense probably the person is uh, talking about uh, maybe uh, some sort of pain in cheek or shoulder or wherever but he, he is not clear and he is putting a lot of effort and there are so many hesitations and pauses in his speech. Uh, uh, even sometimes like uh, the difficult words uh, are hard to articulate and the person would put a lot of effort but he wouldn't be able to articulate those words. Now uh, the next aphasia or the next type of aphasia is Wernicke's aphasia which is also called sensory aphasia. So from the uh, name we can just guess that uh, this uh, and we can get to know rather that uh, Wernicke's aphasia is a disorder that takes place because of damage to Wernicke's area of brain right so uh, the person would be uh, uh, the person having a Wernicke's aphasia would have uh, uh, a disorder in language comprehension right and uh, he would use very general terms uh, even in response to specific requests for information. Now, if you just want to see that how a person would be uh, uh, using his, uh, uh, some of the expressions, uh, you can just look at this. Uh, the example is, I can't talk all of the things I do and part of the part I can go all right, but I can't tell from the other people. Now see, the person is not making any sense. 
uh, now the reason being the person can produce uh, 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 expressions or language but uh, he is actually not able to comprehend whatever he, he is saying so he, if he is not able to comprehend whatever he is saying so obviously he wouldn't be able to make any sort of uh, uh, you can say correction or repair in whatever he has said so if it is not making any sense to him so obviously uh, his speech that would be uncontrolled right so the person might have difficulty in finding the correct word uh, and uh, the examples for for this can be like if you just look at this example the person is trying to uh, say this word kite right but for that he is uh, talking uh, you can say he is trying to uh, he's putting a lot of effort to find the word but uh, still isn't able to see he says it's blowing on the right and uh, there are four letters in it and i think it begins with a, a, a c goes when you start it uh, then goes right up in the air i would i would have to keep uh, racking my brain how i would spell that word that flies uh, that that doesn't fly uh, you pull it around it goes up in the air now the person is actually trying to find only one simple word that is kite but he isn't able to is trying to give so many descriptions but the the word uh, uh, like finding the word has become difficult for him right so uh, the the person with Wernicke's aphasia uh, though has a uh, uh, problem in uh, production uh, sorry uh, problem in comprehension but even his production of speech that is uh, hampered because if he is not able to comprehend whatever he is saying so uh, the speech wouldn't make uh, any sense any proper sense now the next uh, type of aphasia is conduction aphasia uh, now uh, uh, one other much less common type of aphasia has been associated with the damage to the arcuate fasciculus and is called conduction aphasia right now uh, uh, the the part uh, which uh, are the you can say uh, bundle of fibers that uh, links uh, Wernicke's aphasia to Broca's aphasia and sends signal from comprehension to uh, production part if that gets damaged uh, the person would have uh, the conduction aphasia right now this is again language disorder the comprehension of spoken word is normally good however the task of repeating a word or phrase spoken by someone else creates major difficulty right as the person would comprehend but uh, that comprehension part wouldn't be able to send its signal to the production part so the person wouldn't be able to uh, repeat the words now you can just look at the uh, example that the person is trying to say certain words but he is not uh, able to uh, you can say articulate or repeat those words easily now what the speaker hears and understands cannot be uh, transferred very successfully to the speech production and we know the reason behind this is that uh, the the channel that is sending signal from uh, comprehension area that is Wernicke's area to the production area that is Broca's area that is damaged so signal is not being transferred so uh, the person is not able to articulate uh, or repeat whatever he hears right so uh, these are different types of aphasia, uh, for, uh, different types of aphasia like conduction aphasia Wernicke's aphasia also known as sensory aphasia and uh, broca's aphasia that is also called motor aphasia right uh, and before that we had uh, slip uh, slips like slip of tongue slip of uh, slip of ear and there was tip of tongue so these uh, 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 slips are not disorders or impairments whereas these aphasias are language disorders or language impairment